Hi, good morning, Dr. Saeed. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks for asking. Um, so I'm here to present to you my patient. Okay. His name is Gerard, he's a 38 year old male. He comes to the dentist with his chief complaint stating, it's been a long time since I've seen a dentist. I broke a tooth about three weeks ago and that tooth has been, was hurting me more in the past, um, but now it's only pain on chewing. Okay. So on review of his history of present illness, his pain is on the upper right. He points at tooth number four. He broke the tooth about three weeks ago. The pain is worse on chewing. Nothing makes the pain better and he has not attempted any measures to make the pain better. The quality of pain is sharp, shooting, and does not linger, does not radiate. Pain today is six out of 10, and timing is seconds, but pain does not linger. Okay, so let's pause there for a moment and just work through why do we ask, um, why, do, why do we ask the questions about the history of present illness? It's important to understand if the patient's in pain, how that can impact the medical history and the other medical conditions he is dealing with, okay? Um, a secondary reason that we elicit the history of present illness is to start us um, thinking of, along the pathway of what is the differential diagnosis, right? So um, we should have some idea of what the diagnosis is in our head before we move into the clinical exam so that we can select which clinical exams and which radiographic exams do we need to rule in or rule out our um, possible diagnoses from our differential. So based on the information that you've provided to me, what is your differential diagnosis? Just, your differential diagnosis like is a pulpal necrosis with symptomatic apical periodontitis of tooth number four, okay? And so you said that the pain was sharp and shooting. Which types of pain fibers are usually associated yeah. with sharp shooting pain? C fibers? Yeah, okay, and are those typically found in the pulp or the periapical region? Periapical region, okay. Um, we're gonna have to double check that. Um, so when I think of, of pulpal pain, I think of sharp and shooting, and when I think of uh, periradicular pain, I usually think of achy, sore, throbbing types of pain. So there's a little bit of um, area of ambiguity, but I would agree with you that there's some sort of pulpal and periapical uh, disease that's going on with this patient that we need to think about um, with regard to what types of clinical exams. So what type of clinical exams would you use? I would use a cold test, okay. possibly a hot test, okay. and a EPT test, okay. also percussion and palpation. Wonderful, wonderful. And mobility. Okay, great, thank you very much. Um, so let's move on into the medical history. Starting with the patient's vitals today, I took blood pressure twice. His first blood pressure was 150 over 88, and his second blood pressure about five to seven minutes later was 141 over 83. And remind me his age? He's 38 years old. Okay. His heart rate is 85 and his respirations are 14. Patient suffers from hypertension, diabetes type two. He reports checking his blood glucose level daily and his last HbA1c was 7.3, which was checked one month ago. Okay, so let's pause there for one moment. So you reported he has two medical conditions, hypertension and diabetes. So let's talk about the hypertension first. So his blood pressures today were in the 150s and 140s over 80s. How do you feel about that for a patient who's 38 years old? That's high. Okay. And why are we concerned about blood pressure if a as patient, dentists? Mm -hmm. If a patient has a high blood pressure that is uncontrolled, the patient can suffer from a heart attack or stroke. Okay. What questions could you ask the patient today while the patient's in your chair to determine how uh, severe of a risk the patient is of having one of those urgent events? So for stroke, I would ask the patient about headache, dizziness, weakness. Okay. For heart attack, I would talk more about chest pain. Okay. And is there any pain on exertion or unprovoked? Okay. And maybe shortness of breath as well. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, because this is the first time the patient's here for the emergency visit, we don't have a baseline reading for him. So he's kind of borderline um, in terms of do we want to treat or not to treat, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then the diabetes, you said the HbA1c was in the sevens? Sevens. Okay, so sevens. would you describe that as uh, well controlled, poorly controlled, or moderately controlled? For him, he reports it's much better than it was in the past, okay. and for him this is an ideal range of his primary care doctor said is in well controlled for him. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's move on to medications. He's currently taking lisinopril, but he reports that he ran out last week, approximately four days ago. He has plans to go to the pharmacy today to pick up his refills. He okay, also, well, that definitely explains why his blood pressure is running a little high. Okay. 
Um, his medications are metformin, metformin and glipizide. He has no known drug allergies. So, any surgical surgical history? No surgeries. Okay. Excuse me. He has had surgical um, removal of his wisdom teeth when he was 19 years old with no complications. Wonderful. And in terms of dental history, dental history, he cannot remember his last dental visit, but he reports it's likely over three years ago. He had his third molars extracted, like I previously discussed, at 19 years old, no complications. He uses a manual toothbrush and toothpaste from the dollar store one to two times daily. He flosses whenever food gets caught, which he reports as approximately one time a week. He uses mouthwash, which he keeps in his car and uses that one to two times daily as well. Wonderful. So let's then think about how are we gonna manage this patient for us today. So blood pressure has dipped down a little bit after you've taken it a second time. And uh, you probably had him do some deep breathing exercises to get it a little bit under better control. Um, you what, what did you say was his pain score today? Six out of 10. Okay. So what are our options for someone who has moderate level pain um, that's walking into our emergency clinic with not so well from high blood pressure. Um, the first option is a nitrous oxide sedation. Okay. Um, and what does that do? That typically opens the patient up to our care and slows um, respirations and slows heart rate and it can lower his blood pressure. Okay. It can lower the blood pressure. And do you remember the mechanism of how that happens? I don't. Okay. So um, blood pressure is essentially a pump of the heart and tubes, right? So we have to think about the, um, the volume that's in the heart, uh, the volume of blood that's in the heart, and the resistance of the tubes. So think a little bit more. Do you think that the nitrous oxide works more on the... So nitric, so if I remember correctly, nitrous oxide would venodilate, which works more on the tubes. Okay, okay, right, so it will, expand the blood vessels, and when the blood vessels expand, the blood pressure does go down, right? Okay, so that's an option. Um, I might not use that for a patient who's in moderate pain, but it's certainly something that we could consider. Yeah. yeah. How else could, could we manage him today? Um, I would say for having the Lee the room, but since I need to treat him, that does not work. Give him some time alone. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So the other thing that I think we could consider is since he, he knows that he's lapsing in his blood pressure medications, we can encourage him to restart his blood pressure medications and perhaps put him on some sort of um, regimen, maybe an ibuprofen 600 for a few days until he can get his blood pressure under better control. If he was a you know 10 out of 10 pain, I definitely would lean more towards the nitrous oxide. That's still an option today, but we, we also have in our toolkit the option of, of recommending analgesics to the patient. Was there any evidence of swelling when you, I know you didn't do the full no exam swelling. yet, but no obvious swelling from the outside looks, okay. but I didn't look intraorally at this time. Okay, wonderful. So we're now prepared to do the exam. We have sort of a differential diagnosis. We have some thoughts on modifications to care and how we will uh, safely provide care to this patient. I think we're ready to go see the patient. Do you mind if I also include a social history? Oh, please do. So our patient Gerard works in construction. He denies a tobacco history. He reports that he drinks two beers on Friday weekly and denies illicit drug history. And he is African American. Thank you very much. Shall we now go see the yes. patient? Wonderful. Thank you.